All right, good lighting. Helps my, helps my face out. This will be good. Look, I make sure the wardrobe matches the lighting, everything else. So I'm good. There's no doubt. Priorities in life right there. So it's good. Mike, can you start us off? Yeah, sure. Uh, so when you look at kind of how this offense has performed the first two weeks, what do you think is the biggest area of concern still? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good question. I think when you look at us for the first two weeks of the season, you know, versus, again, each week you play a different defense that presents different challenges, right? So... For us, there's been some really good moments of drives, right? You look at week one and you have, you start the season with 31 plays and two drives, but you don't score the touchdowns, right? So our goal of improvement in week two was to be better in the red area, um, which I thought obviously we accomplished better than week one. Um, there's gonna be times in the game, right? Where you're trying to avoid not being on the field, right? And getting three and outs. And I think for us, more importantly, right? Is our ability to continue to stack good plays on top of each other, and then the next drive, right? Take the next drive as the next drive and don't think about what happened in the last drive, good or bad, and move forward. So for us, right, from a progression and progress standpoint, it's just to continue to stack good plays. Because there's times, again, right, in each NFL game, you can pull out sections, good and bad. Uh, we want to focus on what we're doing well and make sure we continue to do that. And then our areas in which the reasons why we're not maybe converting on certain situations, right? Challenge the coaching staff and us, ourselves as players, right? That we make sure that we try to fix and eradicate those issues. So again, if you look at last week, it would be situations on third down, third and one, right? So again, it's, it's not on one person, one player, one coach. It's collectively us coming together and making sure we can sustain those drives because at the end of the day, a fourth and one, third and one, you convert those as an offense you know, obviously that hurts the defense. If the defense stops, the momentum obviously is a big deal for the other side. So we're trying to convert those and, and get better at those as well. When you said that, you know, you kind of want to almost like each drive for its own thing, like, is that more coaches trying to have to think that way? Or is that Matt, is that some of the younger No, I think, it's, I think it's both. I think you come into a situation, uh, NFL, college, high school, whatever you're playing, is you can't let the old adage, the last play, affect you on the next one. Um, because it can beat you. And the reality is, it's not always when the bad play happens. People think, okay, when a sack or a fumble or an interception, how does that player respond to the next play? I would make the argument that it's both. I make the argument after a great play, how does that player respond the next, on the very next play? Uh, some guys, you know, may lose a little concentration focus because they just made a great play. Um, other guys want to love the fact they made a great play and want to make another one, right, and stay within the moment. Um, so it's, it's all of it. It's, each play is a new play. Uh, when you think about it, and each drive and each series is a new series. So that's, that's the mindset we try to make and go forward with. The last thing I know is if Russ can't play on Sunday, what's your level of comfort with Tajay and then also with the chaos on the outside? Because they're, they're two different receivers. Sure. Almost everyone. Yeah, uh, it goes back to you know, just our roster on offense in general. And, and I know I said it to you guys earlier. Um, during these press conferences about our ability to have guys go out there and compete during training camp um, and have guys be able to play multiple positions. Um, and so regardless if it's the wide receiver, the position, the tight end or anywhere else, um, whoever's in there, regardless of because of injury or because that's just the rotation in which they're going in, uh, there's an expectation and standard uh, that guys go in and perform and do their job. So it's us, regardless of what personnel groupings out there for whatever reason, guys go out there and, and execute at a high level and, and do what you're asked to do. And us as coaches, make sure we put them in a good spot to do it. To that end, what do you like about OZ and, and his, I guess, skill set? Yeah, now you call him OZ, I know who you're talking about. When we went with the name there, I was like, <laughs> where are we going? Um, no, OZ is, again, like a lot of guys on our team, is, a, is a, a professional in terms of the definition of it. And what I mean by that is um, he knows the plan. He knows the responsibility, not just his, but if he's forced to play other positions for whatever reason, uh, he's prepared. Uh, he does the mental work in front of the meetings in terms of studying. And when he's in the meetings uh, and you ask him questions, he's ready to go. Um, so that obviously gives confidence to not just the coaches, but the players around him. Um, and so OZ, has, since I've met him, that's been who he is. And he's been that, that, he's been that way consistently day in, day out. And it, as coaches and his teammates, you appreciate that about him.
Sure. And, and I was just curious from your perspective, like, what do you tell these guys after, you know, a couple weeks of some inconsistencies to get that consistency in them? Yeah, I think from a consistency standpoint, it, it's something that um, I've shared before in the quarterback room of, I think NFL players have to have a large capacity for boredom. And what I mean by that is your ability to do the same thing, a monotonous thing fundamentally over and over and over um, and not get tired or sick of it. And I think that breeds the consistency. No different in any position, but specifically the quarterback. If the check down is the right play, you consistently take the check down. If the shot is the right play, then you consistently take the shot, but you stay consistent to what you're asked and you have that capacity to literally stay and play board and not try to be ex do the exciting thing because it flashes, right? Stay within yourself. I think that breeds a consistency. I want to piggyback on what, uh, I want to piggyback on what you just said about what Matt said. He also talked about Chris Lindstrom and consistency was one of the words he used with him. So in addition to consistency with Chris, what are some of the other things that he's brought to the table? I know the O-line has, you know, kind of been up and down, but what have you seen out of him that's been so consistent and so great for you? Yeah, I, again, I think it's a lot of the guys up front. I think you... Each day I go down to their individual, right, uh, for two reasons. One, right, be around those guys, see how they work. And two, right, observe, right, the different leadership styles or the personalities of one on the practice field. And Chris, in my opinion, just like other guys on the offensive line, he's got a workman's mentality. Like, it's, it's serious business to him to make sure he does his job at a high level. And he does that from pre-practice to individual through the team drills, and then obviously, you know, if you do that stuff, you expect the consistency in the game, uh, and you've seen that from Chris. And how has it been for you? Just another thing that he talked about last week was how important it is for him to make the O line successful, particularly Jalen Mayfield. So how's it been for you to have someone like that, especially so young in his career, to sure. take that mantle? Yeah, I think it's the approach really of, you know, with those guys right now. You got from Lindstrom to Jake Matthews to Caleb to Henny. To those guys who've been with each other uh, before I, even I got here, and they accepting other guys who are coming into the O-line room. And what Coach Ledford and Coach Henley have done is they fostered an environment in which it allows certain guys to lead their own way. And I think you get that from Jake, you get that from Chris, you get that from Henny. Guys let their personalities out. And to me, you have your best unit when guys can be themselves and not forced to be something that they're not. And I think you see that from those guys. Uh, they're truly comfortable in their own skin, and they want to lead in their own way. Speaking of Chris's personality, I generally think of offensive linemen as mean and nasty human beings. But Chris seems exactly the opposite. He seems super nice. Is that? I mean, <laughs> yeah, look, I think, I think there's a – what I've found, at least in this league, in my experience, is uh, between the white lines, there's a certain personality. And then outside the white lines, I would argue that a number of guys have a different personality. Um, so with – to me, when, sure, when Chris is between the lines, right, it's workmen, do my job, execute at a high level. That's important to him. Now, it doesn't mean like we're in the building, that's not the same case in meetings. But Chris, again, you know, you guys have gotten to know him, uh, you know, professional on and off the field, you know, genuine, I think is the best word I can use with him. Um, and you can tell a lot of things matter to him that are important. And he makes sure that that's forefront for him. Yeah, sure. I mean, again, you go through the different opponents, the different matchups, things of that nature. Um, the way that those two run the football, uh, in my mind, right, they're, they're not just a certain type of a back. Um, they're able to do different uh, schemes, uh, which, you know, we hope moving forward presents issues for the defense. Um, but I'll always say this about the, what those two in particular, because obviously I've had previous experience with them in a, in a different place, in a different life. But they run with a certain attitude, and they make sure that as they move forward during the game, they don't let up on that. So it's a mindset of a physicality. Um, and to me, right, that should bode well as the season continues uh, for both those guys and obviously for the guys up front because they appreciate the way that those guys are running the football. And how much, if need be, how much more can you put on a quarter rail play in the run game? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I said this to you guys last week, and I think you guys are seeing – uh, with your own eyes um, during the games. It, the CP to me is a person, like I've said before, I've had experience with. Um, I've had one-on-one -on -one experience with um, 
just us meeting together. Um, I know, I, I like to think I know how his mind works and what he can handle. Um, and again, I said to you guys before, this is a football player. Um, he loves football. And so it's not just certain aspects of it. He loves the, everything that comes with it. So again, you know, whatever we feel makes us a better football team, a better offense, right, we're going to use all of our different pieces the right way um, and get those guys in position, and, and CP is no different. Man, you went dark right there. Golly. Woo. Uh, I mean, my, my mind went a lot of different places right there. Um, I, I, I do believe this. At this level, you coach and player, you can't be something that you're not. So you have to be genuine in how you approach your job. I think the minute that you start to try to be someone or something that you're not, um, I think people see through that. So in my mind, when these players or coaches are out there, you have to ha their personality has to show because I think you get the full person when that happens. I think when you're trying to maybe guard yourself, you're, you're not giving of your whole self. So to me, regardless if you're talking about me in particular, for instance, right, there's a certain level in which I've carried myself and who I think I am, and that reflects to how players re respond to me and coaches. I can't all of a sudden try to be, I've coached for a lot of different people and a lot of smart guys, successful guys. I can't just mimic someone because they were successful because that's not my personality. Even though I like some things they might have done, I still have to make it my own. It's no different than a player. Just because they see the guy they're competing with or someone in their team really successful, they still can't be that person. They still have to be who they are. And again, that's We've never said not to do that. We want these guys to have their personality, we want them to be themselves. Um, I think you do get the best version of that person when you allow them to be who they are. Is it tougher to get a player to actually buy into that because of? I think it's how you foster the environment, right? I think that's a good question. I think it's about, you know, how you run your meetings, how you're on the practice field, um, how you coach them, how you have conversations that don't deal with football, and it's about life or about things outside of football and building those relationships. Um, and to me, right, you, you foster an environment uh, that allows that to occur. Uh, I've been with places where that has happened and been with places where that hasn't happened. Um, and again, just by your experience, right, and again, you sometimes go back to your own, right? When you're who you are, you let your emotions and everything go, you're free. When you're trying to be something that you're not, regardless of your jobs, we can all probably say that, right? When you're in something that you're not, right, at some point, it's hard to play the game when you're not true to yourself. So I'm not sure that I answered your question. I mean, we went to a lot of different spots, but my goodness, I did the best I could, my man. Matt said something yesterday also about making really, what he called really ordinary plays over and over. Do you have to coach against guys trying to do something out of the ordinary, to feel like I have to be this or that to, to No, I think it goes back to what I said earlier about the capacity for boredom. I think Matt's a good illustration throughout his career of taking – exactly what the defense presents to him, getting the ball out at a certain time in which his players, his teammates can catch and run or right, the ball is out before a protection potential issue to give more confidence to the guys up front. So it works hand in hand. To me, that those are the conversations that we have with not just the quarterbacks but with, with multiple players about just make the play that's available. I think, again, you start to make plays or you start to do something out of the ordinary because you're trying to make a play Typically, right, you're, it's going to lead to disaster. It might work out once or twice, right? And there are special players in this league that can go off script m multiple times a game and just make it happen. I would argue that the majority of the guys, that doesn't typically work out, and it gets you in more trouble, which doesn't lead to prosperous outcomes. What's the percentage of those guys that can go off script? I mean, I, two, yeah, I mean, the reality is you can probably pick a few guys that can go back at certain positions, right? And maybe not run the route exactly how you drew it up and still find a play. Or, right, it could be a DB who all of a sudden jumps a route that has no reason to jump it, but he has, he has intangible, he feels something, boom, instincts, and he takes something. I think for the majority of guys in this league, if you do what you're asked to do under the pressure in which you're asked to do it, 
Like, I don't, I think you're, you, you have a more successful path. I think the minute in pressurized situations, which NFL games are, right, you start to do something that's out of the ordinary, it, it probably leads into more trouble than it does success. Anybody else? Are we good? Thank you. Oh, man. I need to wear something different next week. Oh. <laughs>